Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today I'm going to address a question about radials. This question is fairly commonly asked. It's from Craig Moran, KC3PEZ. And he lives in Pittsburgh. And he says, just watched your video on a survey of less expensive vertical antennas. I have a question about ground radials. My yard has a large drop-off near where I would consider putting a vertical antenna. Is it still possible to use a vertical? Yes, absolutely you can. The yard drops down about 8 feet at or near a vertical angle. I call it a Pittsburgh yard because every yard around here has a hill going up or going down. Does a vertical section of a radial affect it? Yes, a little bit. Could you run the radial down the bank of the hill and across the lower part of the yard? Absolutely. Would the vertical length count toward the overall length of the vertical? No. The length of the vertical goes from the base of the vertical where it's connected to the inside of the coax and up. Okay, the radials go off and do their thing. Now, if you tilt your radial field a little bit like this, it's going to cause the propagation to tend to favor in the direction of the drop a little bit. Not necessarily a huge amount, but some. It will. You can also put a radial field on a hill, entirely on the hill, if you want to, and it will cause the vertical, which you really want to have vertical, uh, to tend to favor this direction a little more than the other directions. I don't think that you'll find how much it favors that direction to be terribly much. Maybe a dB or 2 dB, something like that. But yes, go ahead and put your vertical where you can, put your radials where you can, and if you can get them out in a 360 degrees around the antenna, that is nice. A lot of people are stuck with, say, putting a vertical kind of near the corner of a building, and so they've got three quarters of a circle where they can put radials. Can that work? Yes, it can. It will tend to direct the propagation a little bit, in the direction of the radials, okay? If you have only one radial, like you're running a, 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 a buddy pole or something like that, you're going to get favoring that direction fairly strongly. Now, how many radials should you put down? More shorter radials are better than a few long radials if they're laid out on the ground. So if you have a spool of wire that's 500 feet, um, you can lay down, if you want, 25-foot radials, and you have 20 of them, okay? If you want to go with 20-foot radials, you can have, what, 25 of those, something like that. That's a lot of radials, but you can get a spool of 500-foot spool of insulated THHN house wire, um, 14 gauge, I like. Stranded, get the stranded. It's so much easier to work with. Um, and you can get it for less than $100. And then you've got your radial field out there, and those radials will last you forever. Uh, when you attach them to the radial plate, note that you've got copper and aluminum. Copper and aluminum don't get along. So you want to use stainless steel hardware. You'd put a stainless steel bolt, you wrap the copper around the bolt and put a washer there. So you've got bolt, copper, washer, stainless steel, a lock washer, another washer, and a stainless steel nut. Uh, stainless steel is subject to something called galling, uh, which is a weird word for the fact that when you put stainless steel nuts together they're real hard to get apart unless you put this goop on them. I wouldn't worry terribly about it but you can get the stuff so that it won't gall. You can look that up on the internet if you'd like more information about it. I've never run into the problem myself. 
Uh, of course, I live in a dry climate. Pittsburgh is not a dry climate. Pittsburgh, it rains. And that water is going to cause corrosion unless you use the stainless steel technique. If you've got a lot of radials, you might go to DX Engineering. They have something called a radial plate, which is just a, a square piece of stainless steel and a bunch of stainless steel nuts and bolts. And you set it on the ground and then you put your vertical down through it. And then that will hold the radials uh, in place and do a very good job of it. That's what I use here. And uh, use the stainless steel um, to connect that radial plate to the aluminum antenna. Now th this is to the part that goes to ground that goes to the outside shield of the coax. The inner on the coax goes to the antenna itself. Again I'm thinking entirely in terms of those antennas that require radials. If your antenna doesn't uh, require radials and you don't have to worry about any of this. Uh, my antenna is a step IR, big IR, and it does need radials. I've got about 32 radials of various lengths out there, and the antenna works great. It's not working right now. I've got to troubleshoot it, but there's a foot of snow in the backyard, and I've got a broken ankle, so that's going to wait for spring. But uh, hopefully that's uh, going to be coming up soon. I've noticed the days are getting longer. My wife and I are going absolutely bananas with the pandemic travel restrictions here, <laughs> spending all our time at home. Today we took a ride. Uh, we watched church on Zoom, and then we took a ride just to get out of the house. But uh, it'll, it'll all be over. It'll all be over in, in due time. In the meantime, uh, if you can put that uh, antenna up, lay those radials out, I think you'll have good success with it. And I personally prefer um, insulated radials. Uh, remember, if you've got children around the house who might be picking them up or playing with them while you are transmitting that you ought to put something over the ends of the radial so that they, they don't touch those because that's the high voltage point or just don't operate when there are kids in the backyard. So there you go. I hope that answers your question, Craig. Uh, yes, you are in good shape and uh, you will probably have great luck with that radial. You're close enough to the coast that you'll probably get a lot of European DX. So, there you go. If you would like to uh, contribute financially to this, not contribute, that's a bad word, because that implies I'm a charity and I'm not a charity. Uh, if you would like to help support this channel, uh, go to dcastler.com support, and there are multiple ways there that you can do it, from Patreon uh, to uh, directly through PayPal and uh, so on. I also have the thumb drives for sale for the Tech General and extra videos. They are the same videos that are on YouTube. So if you can watch them on YouTube, you don't need the thumb drive. But if you're in a position where you have poor internet or you're going on a camping vacation to the northern part of Idaho, I don't know, whatever, and you'd like to take that with you, you can do that that way. So until we next meet, 73.